burden not the lack of Aries, Leo, or Taurus with thy faults, nor make Saturn, Mars, or Venus guilty of thy follies. Thomas Brown. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Secrets of Saturn. My name is Jason Lindgren. I'm your host. Tonight we have Esoteric Scholar Made Manifest. Good evening. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Um, the one thing I would not call myself is any type of scholar. Um, I appreciate the, uh, you know, I appreciate the uh, the introduction, but um, that's kind of my thing is that I go, I go the complete opposite direction of scholarly bullshit. You know, I go down, I I go down the esoteric path as opposed to the exoteric which would be scholarly you know false facades and and the bullshit you know that well it's not all bullshit but it's just you know kind of candy coated it's it doesn't get to the core you know you can think of i i think of the i liken it to the to saturn itself you can you know think of this as as saturn you know the inner body the actual sphere is the esoteric that is the inner house of the truth the as opposed to the rings the outer rings which is the false lies fed to the masses to keep them beating around the bush as in you're you're playing ring around the rosy you know you're beating around the bush you're circling around that inner core at the the truth that lies within the bush you know hidden on the inside think it it's like the golden egg hidden on the inside that's the esoteric and you know the scholarly while while there's some there's some good credible history there most of it is just you know basically bullshit fed to the masses to keep them beating around that bush that's right perpetually you know like the ouroboros you know just the serpent eating its own tail while we'll, we'll never actually getting to the true you know the truth at the center of it so so yeah, I, I'm. I would not consider myself a scholar. I'm just someone that likes to uh, constantly learn new things, and uh, usually not deterred by any you know taboo subjects. And and um, you know most people will get will get scared of you know oh well that's heavy that that gives me dark feeling or that's oh I I don't know these these symbols are well it's it's information all information is inherently neutral. It's only your, one's own perception Correct. that can, you know that can filter these things as either dark or negative. I mean, unless it's actually imposing its will on someone, you know, it, in in a harmful way to either you know another being or another being's property, then then it's 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 not doing any harm if it's just neutral in itself, which all information is inherently neutral it's only how one uses that information it's like you know the guns don't kill people people kill people that's the their intention you know though the tool itself is just a tool you know it's how we use that tool that makes the difference i totally agree so yeah (laughs) fantastic do you want to talk a little bit about yourself before we go into uh, our subject tonight which is going to be saturn um a little bit about myself is i'm basically how I got started into all of this is a very interesting – I mean nothing nothing really significant. It's just I got started in October of 2012, so I have only actually been quote-unquote awakened for not even two whole years now. And I've literally just taken off, like just, like just taken this stuff and run with it. Like Because when, when I got – when I – first had my awakening experience it was when i saw david wilcox um 2012 enigma presentation okay which, um because i got started into all of this you know seeing all the mainstream bullshit about you know 2012 and all you know all the fear-based bullshit oh yeah and, and, and i intuitively knew i was like okay there's got to be you know something else here that they're not telling us And so I decided to start looking into it for myself. And, you know, once I started looking, then everything that I, all the questions that I had ever had started coming to me, you know, like, like in synchronicity, they just started falling right into my lap. I didn't even have to go looking. I mean, it just started coming to me once, you know, once something comes into your awareness, you start seeing it everywhere. And so 
that's what launched me on my path. Um, I started off basically connecting all, all the religions, all the symbols of the religions, all the same universal teachings held within it. And so I basically started off getting really far out there as, as far as like, um, you know, I guess you could call it like light, light worker, you know, stuff. But, um, but then after I realized that that's what I, what I've been searching for my whole life, I realized that there was more to it. And the reason why I hadn't found all of this stuff my whole life was because it was deliberately hidden. And so, I mean, that's what I saw as the ultimate crime. I mean, if I was to deem anything as a sin in this universe, it would be, it would be the withhold deliberate withholding of information. No, I agree with you there. To me, that is the one thing that I cannot stand is, is, you know, holding out or occulting, hiding information, especially in order to gain, you know, some sort of advantage over everyone else. I mean, in my opinion, everyone should have access freely to all information and whether, you know, whether they decide that it's not for them, that's, that's their choice. But I mean, everyone should have that, that choice to be made openly, you know, without, without either having to be fed bullshit by mainstream media or any of these other institutions, like, you know, like, like say universities and most, and most corporate owned and operated institutions. So I've decided to go down my own path, which is to counter all of that, which I'm sure most of us are all on that same page and on that same path, is to counteract all of that by literally just disseminating as much information as we can. Be that be that perceived as good, bad, or ugly. I mean, it's all just information. Although there can be, you know, other extremes to that that fall out of balance, like, say, you know, what a, there is legitimate fear-based information. But for the most part, that's what we're being fed by these corporate-owned institutions as opposed to, you know, doing your own research. And, and although there's so much disinformation and, you know, all the COINTELPRO agents and all that out there, that mm-hmm. that's – this is sort of where I'm fortunate myself is – my intuition has always been so strong that I never even had an issue like discerning truth from bullshit or disinformation or fallacy. I mean, it all comes down to, I mean, a balanced left and right hemisphere of the brain, a balanced creative essence, especially, you know, being either a writer or a poet or a musician or what have you that has that creative aspect as well as, being grounded in reality in in this physical as well with the analytical and the rational you know left hemisphere perfectly balanced because if we're polarized into one or the other which mark passio uh brilliantly portrays all of this and breaks it down so perfectly and so poignantly that i mean this is how i see things is that i mean it's all about balance in this realm and that's what I strive for is just to always stay balanced in everything that I do and everything that I see and everything that I study. It's all about balance, everything. That sounds like a great way to be. Exactly, man. Cool. Well, we like I said before, I would like to go into uh, the subject of Saturn and its meaning, all the things that uh, – the history that's been drawn upon it. And um, why don't we start at the beginning as far back as uh, we can both – go to its early uh, uses in religions, symbolism, all that, and we'll work our way up to the present time. Definitely, that sounds good. Um, okay, as as far as I know, um, originally back in ancient times, Saturn was... And, and I'm, I'm drawing upon research from... Uh, from um, there is a brilliant presentation um, called Ali- or Symbols of an Alien Sky, which is by um, the Electric Universe Theory with uh, the Thunderbolts Project. 
Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. Very, very great research um, <clears throat> and very thorough as well. goes back into all the universal symbols, The uh, back to the times when there was obviously one form of, of universal language as well as um, – as as well as universal symbols, which are a langu- a whole language in itself, as as pictographs. So Saturn was originally deemed in the in the oldest times as 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 the best quote unquote the best sun, and Saturn at some point was somehow a sun, and this is goes back. It also can be connected to. The symbol of um, the eight-spoked wheel at, that we can we can find in almost all these ancient cultures, like Sumerian, Mesopotamian cultures, um, obviously Native American cultures as well, Asian, Eastern cultures. Everywhere you look, you see the eight-spoked wheel, which we obviously relate, and we can obviously see that it is also. The zo- the symbol of the zodiac wheel. It's you know Ezekiel's wheel, the wheel within the wheel. It's the zodiac wheel, which obviously we all know that Saturn is the ruler of the zodiac. He is the father of the zodiac. He is the old goat. He is he is the ruler of the house of Capricorn, which is the sign of the goat, the old goat. So that is where you know you get into. You get into the symbolism of the goat, which is, you know, which is the satyr, which comes from Saturn, which also we have the anagram of of Saturn, of S-T-N, when you break down the language and the etymology of the word itself. This is where we get from Saturn, we get Satan, who is Saturn is Satan in astrotheology. And all these words have the st in. It's it's that it's that etymological essence, and this is where we get our our modern stories and myth and myths like Santa of Santa Claus because Santa is Satan because Santa it has the big he's got the big belly which and he and you know he. It, well, I, I I forget exactly all the all the connections to that off the top of my head. But if you you know if anyone does their research, they will find that indeed this is the case. And also the myth of Santa is you know that goes off into a whole another aspect in itself. Um, I mean, it also goes into the sacred mushroom cults of um, you know of of Jesus being the Amanita muscaria mushroom as well. But so again, back to Saturn is is the satyr which the satyr is is the goat it's it's pan it's it's the goat and this is where we get satire and which all comes from saturn which is um i mean it's why we have saturn's day which is the day of it's saturn's day is known as the black sabbath so that's where we get all these (laughs) We get all these ba- – and the black sun is also Saturn, so that is why it's the black Sabbath because that's when it was the ancient day of rest, and in, in especially in in, uh, in Judaism. I'm not sure if the Orthodox Judaism, but as far as like Zionism goes, then they that's why they, they take the day off on, on Saturn's day or Saturday because that's the black – it's the Sabbath. It's the black Sabbath who is – Saturn is the black sun. The color and, of Saturn is black. Exactly. Hence and the black robes and all that. The black robes, the uh, the black priesthood. Um, so, so, so yeah, it, it, he he is known as the black. I, I refer to as as he because you know Saturn is is the old he is old Father Time is Kronos the yeah the god Kron- of time. Kronos, which is where we get chronology and. Which is time, and this is where we get all the symbols that go along with it. Which the symbol of time is the hourglass, and the hourglass is the symbol of the the uh, <clears throat> the Lemnis gate, which is the infinity symbol, and so that is also the symbol of the hourglass and the infinity symbol. We can link this to vortex-based mathematics because in vortex mathematics. Marco Rodin's work, 
um, th there are two separate sets of, uh, of number systems and the infinity symbol in vortex mathematics is what's known as the bounded infinity and Saturn being the ruler of time. And he is the keeper of time of this. I like to see it as of this physical realm of time is where the bounded infinity, you can think of it as we are eternally going in a cycle of an eternal incarn reincarnation. We are constantly coming back and reincarnating in this cycle in what's called the bounded infinity. And in vortex mathematics, you also have the separate set of numbers, which is, which is the pyramid, and it's the 369 axis. And Nikola Tesla also has a brilliant quote that says, if you know the secret of the 369, you hold keys to the universe. And vortex-based mathematics, the 369 is the intangible realm. It's outside of time. It's outside of the limitations of this physical reality of reincarnation cycle. It is, and at the center of that bounded infinity symbol lies the zero point, which in which in uh, plasma physics as well as implosion technology, the zero point is the point where you pop out of the this physical realm of time, this physical reality. Which so Saturn is the ruler of this of this physical realm because in astro theology as well as as well as astronomy. Um, Saturn is the last visible planet that can be seen with the naked eye. So that is why he's deemed as the ruler of this physical realm, because beyond Saturn, you can no longer see it with the physical eye. So therefore, beyond Saturn would be, would be Uranus and Neptune and Pluto. So those three are, in astrotheology, they are deemed as the intangible realm or in vortex-based mathematics, the realm outside of time. So that is why he is considered the ruler of time. And, and in ancient you know, mythology, in, in, in Greek, he was known as Cronus. And also, this goes back to the ancient Cana Phoenicians. It, every, everything that we know of in modern society goes back to the ancient Cana Phoenicians. Possibly even, possibly even the the modern zodiac that we think of. Although there is a lot of evidence to show that the zodiac, as well as astrotheology, goes further, even much further back than ancient Cana Phoenicia. But there was a manipul there was a manipulation of the original cycles of of time. The original cycles that are aligned with nature and today the Roman Catholic church has completely distorted our perception of our, our, our alignment with the cycles of nature and time. Right. That's up. Yeah, absolutely. As far as the 13 moon calendar goes and the, the Mayan calendar as well, which has a 13 month calendar with each with 28 days. And today it's it's all corrupted by the Roman Catholic Church and the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar, which set a, set off our our calendar, which sets off the cycles of nature, which goes completely against all the laws of nature. So it's it's that Luciferian principle, which you know the Luciferian principle is it wants to skew off from the rest of the entire function of the universe and go on its own path. You know, it, it goes back to the biblical allegories of, you know, Satan wanted to, you know, wanted to try his hand at becoming God and wanted to overthrow God. Well, that would be the same as this Luciferian principle, which is, you know, it wants to try and, it, it, and there's not, I'm not intentionally, I'm not intentionally, saying that this is anything to be deemed as negative it's just it's just it it's like cuz anything in, in the spiritual realms can be anything can be done spirit can do anything that it wants to do so long as it's not imposing upon free will choice of another being 
So if it wants to go off and experience time in its own in its own way, then spirit has all the free will to do so. But um, but it, it just it just goes against all of the cycles of the universal principles, which is you know the natural cycles of time and the natural cycles of nature, which have been thrown off by the the anno domini calendar. And so that, that throws off all our cycles. And so once our cycles of time is thrown off, then our entire perception is thrown off. Our entire mental process, our entire con- aspect of consciousness is thrown out of balance and can be limited and therefore easily controlled. Because if we're not in tune with nature, we don't have our connection with eternal source of, of this universal law, of this universal principle that is inherent in all of life and all of nature and all these cycles of time. So yeah, sorry if I tend to ver- veer off um, the topic there, but um, well, to back up what you're saying there, I think it's pretty safe to say that in modern society, we have been very much separated from what we really should be connected to, which is our spirituality. Yes. Yes, exactly. We're, and it's, it's mostly all controlled by commerce and of course, commerce, anyone that does a good amount of research into the origins of commerce and law and legalities and all of that goes, goes right back to ancient Cana Phoenicia, who were the Cana Phoenicians. And um, any, anyone that wants to learn a lot about this, Jordan Maxwell is probably the most prominent researcher on this topic and definitely – probably the 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 first to come out openly with all of this really in-depth research although you know no one you don't want to get uh limit your perspective to just one person's you know perspective but anyone can do this research for themselves and he is a very great um source to you know to trigger your your curiosity to trigger your own you know to trigger anyone's own path to study this stuff for themselves because there are key words there are key things to look up when anyone wants to get into this but um but yeah so the Cana Phoenicians worshipped the god El who El is also Saturn because El was El was linked to well El El was Cronus and L is also Saturn, and the link to that would be – sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. That's okay. But um, yeah, I, I don't really know all of this off the top of my head, but I know – Well, you, you're on the right right path as far as I've, I understand it. Um, L was a generic – term for God, and then it also was specifically related to Saturn, hence where we get the terms like elevate, elect, that sort yeah. of thing. Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. So yeah, you're completely correct. But it goes back to, you know, um, sorry, I'm getting kind of distracted here. I got to close out all my other shit. <laughs> no problem. All right, so we, so we went back to the beginning of history as far as you know and probably either one of us knows and what would you say is the next stage or the next step what was that taken through like uh we're talking about several thousands of years here um you mean from from Cana Phoenicia to modern times right well coming into modern times uh i mean i'm personally aware of the fact that a lot of the saturn symbolism has certainly been carried over into the, today's time but even before we get up into the modern age, uh, what would you say is the next stage of Saturn's usage after we get out of uh, you know, the ancient, ancient times? Uh, where would you say uh, mm. we could focus next on its development and usage? Well, it's basically like all things, symbols, words, language, and any of these tools – As I like to think of them, they are all tools to be used to either gain wisdom or in the case of this cult of Saturn, this 
this dark priesthood, this black priesthood of Saturn, and I don't mean black as in skin color, I mean black as in black robed judges, mm-hmm. um, um, you know, priests and everything uh, as far as the church goes, the way they would use this is to, you know, gain control over others. And so this has always evolved over time as as tools of commerce and tool, basically tools of mind control to paint people's perceptions. And to make it clear out there, uh, judges, uh, Jewish priests, Catholic priests, and even a lot of Protestant priests – uh, they all use black robes, and that does indeed originally come from Saturn, Saturn whose color was black. Yes, e- exactly. I mean, once once you see, once we begin to study these symbols and these rituals, are are is what it all is. It's all ritual, and this all, as well as, of course, we get to the black cube of Saturn. Mm-hmm. Which was probably the next step, next stage, for, in the symbolism evolution, from you know from the from the zodiac wheel, from the eight spoked eight spoked wheel, um, you know, which was also deemed as the medicine wheel in Native American cultures, as well as all cultures had the eight spoked wheel of the zodiac, signifying the ages and the cycles of time and nature, and then. It gets into the religious aspect of it, which it begins to, uh, which comes from the Cana Phoenicians, who were the who were the ancient Hebrew priest class, you know, practicing getting into like Kabbalah and all of that, which today the, today in modern religions we have the black cube as well as. Modern Judaism and Zionism, which all all has the black cube, which, I mean, when you start to study the black cube, you see that it's everywhere. You get from from commerce to banking to to religions. The black cube of Mecca, where they circle counterclockwise around the black cube, which is the same as the cube on the North Pole of Saturn, which is actually a hexagon, but when viewed three dimensionally as opposed to two dimensionally. The hexagon is just a cube from a pers- from an angle of perspective, and the pole around Saturn flows counterclockwise from from viewing it from the North Pole. And there is the hexagon storm or whatever it is on the North Pole. Exactly, and so that's where we get the term hex. Mm-hmm. As far as like witchcraft goes, is you are hexed, which the hex is is also it's the x which is where we get exoteric it is from you are excluded you are exiled you are excommunicated from <laughs> from the inner house of wisdom which is the inner body of saturn and the x would be the outer rings of saturn where again you are beating around the bush if you're caught in the false lies of the false facades kept front that are propagated to the masses through via things like mainstream media and other avenues of institutions like universities which is why when you graduate from a university you have been gradually eight which eight is the number of saturn as well as the number nine which is where we have the nine square the magic cube of saturn which is the the magic nine square where all the numbers add up to nine, which is where we we play that you know magic nine square game in school or whatever to kill time to kill time to kill time, you mean like father time, you mean like like the in mythology you mean like the god Saturn who or Cronus who ate his own children gradually he gradually ate his own children so. They graduate, so and and they and when we graduate or we gradually indoct we get gradually indoctrinated. Mm-hmm, your graduation. Yeah, exactly. We wear the black robe of Saturn and the mortarboard and the mortarboard, the black cube on our heads, which uh, the mortarboard is the Masonic 
tool uh, which you mix cement on and let's also not forget the uh the black cube of the 24-hour apple store in manhattan oh yeah of course yeah i loved that one when i saw it and and the apple i mean the the app of l (laughs) and we take a bite we take a bite and the symbol for apple is the apple with the bite taken out of it goes back to biblical allegory i'm not going to say biblical history because it's not his story it's just allegory it's just symbolism correct it's it's all code and goes back to taking a bite out of wisdom take or taking a bite out of knowledge out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil aka this realm of duality of polarity of good and bad light versus dark of infinite reincarnation cycle and so when we graduate from school, we wear the mortarboard on our head, which is used to mix cement in masonry. And this is why we're just another brick in the wall, all in all, because, <laughs> because we have been polished. We have we st- in masonry. We start off as a rough stone. We are an unpolished stone, and in masonry, the perfect. The perfect form is a 90-degree angle, which in in astrology and astrotheology, a 90-degree angle, as far as energy is concerned, is not the most perfect form. Because if you think of a- energy flowing, energy hits that right angle and it has nowhere to go. It comes to a dead end. Energy hits that right angle and it can't continuous, continuously flow fluidly. But a, tr- a trine or a, or a trinity – or a triang of L, the triang of L, meaning the tri, an ang meaning bull, which this gets, this is one of the most prominent aspects of this research is you start to research that L is the bull god, and Saturn L is the bull god. And this is why the Illuminati and this dark priesthood and cult of Saturn, the L lights, the worshipers of L, worship the bull god and this is why you always see the bull symbolism everywhere we look is the bull the bull of wall street the bull on of chicago the bull market the goes back to every ancient culture every ancient mythology even and most people have always said it will say to me whatever whatever all cultures don't worship the bull god and don't come from the worship of Saturn or the bull god Saturn. Well, they actually do because – and they're like, no, Buddhism uh, – all the religions aren't controlled by the Illuminati. All religions aren't controlled by this dark priesthood of Saturn. Well, when you look deep enough and when you look and find the connections between all these things rather than only looking for the for the, for the the for the differences, there are far more similarities in all in everything than there are differences. When we start looking for the similarities in all things as opposed to the differences, then we start to see pictures – we start to see the puzzle come together. We start to see the big picture. We start to see things connect, and this is one of my personal focuses is syncretism, which syncretism is connecting all things and finding common bonds between them as opposed to being separated by – these cultural programs that tell us that everything is separate, that all religions are separate, that all cultures are separated by time and space. They are separated by distance, and so therefore they don't share roots and common bonds. Well, everything shares a common bond because it all comes from a same universal source, a universal truth. And um, so, yeah, they, it all comes from the bull god who, who is El, who is – because the very word El – in Paleo Hebrew, the is the name is the name of the Paleo Hebrew god of ancient Cana Phoenicia, and th- when you get into the Paleo Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet, the name El, the name of of the god El of the Hebrew god of the Bible El, is is actually is, is spelled A L in in modern English alphabet is A L, not E L. Because in Paleo Hebrew it's A L, and the Aleph is the first letter of the Paleo Hebrew alphabet, which is the Cana Phoenician alphabet. And so the Aleph 
comes from the ancient Paleo-Hebrew pictograph of which was a bull's head. It was a pictograph of a bull, of the bull's head and the bull's horns. And this is where you'll have to see the pictures and the images to actually get the under, the full understanding of, of what I'm conveying here. But if you look it up, the pictograph of the he, Paleo-Hebrew Aleph is, is the bull's head. And this is why our letter A is the upside down bull's head. If you think, if you picture the A, it is a bull's head upside down. There are two horns with the triangle, which is the bull's face and the two horns going up. So <clears throat> flip an A upside down, it is a bull's head. And this was the ancient Paleo Hebrew depiction of the letter Aleph. And today, the modern letter A is the symbol of the air, of air. It's the air sign, which is the truncated pyramid which is the symbol of the Illuminati, the pyramid with the, t with the, the capstone eleva elevated into a loft in the air, like the, he like the Hebrew letter Yod, which is found aloft in the air, like Yoda floats aloft in the air, which is where, which is, um, is jo Jordan Maxwell explains this again all very well, is that, is that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg were anything but stupid. <laughs> exactly. They, they, they were masters of – I'm not sure about Steven Spielberg, but I know George Lucas is a master of Kabbalistic tradition and Paleo-Hebrew <clears throat> or at least maybe you know, just these Hebrew traditions. You know, Well, he's uh, admitted to studying uh, mythology in depth. Really? I, I, yeah, see, I didn't know that. But I do know that <clears throat> if you look at the connections, but yeah, I mean just look at – the simple connections like like um like and I, I wrote a very good article about that here which i can, i can uh, refer to real quick just so that i don't get off track while i'm um talking about this but when you look into to the star wars um the movie star wars there is kabbalistic symbolism and saturn symbolism all throughout it so i i'm looking over my notes that i put out on facebook right now it's called l the Illuminati bull god of the Bible, and it, it breaks down L, Saturn symbol, Saturn worship, and uh, as well as the Moloch from ancient Cana Phoenicia, which is the bull god. It all goes back to the bull god. But so um, let me uh, scroll down, look up real quick um, my references to George Lucas. And um, so <clears throat> the symbolism contained in the film Star Wars, you can start it off, okay, um, the constellation of Taurus in in in, uh, in astronomy has it has a star which is known as the bullseye, which is a red. It's it's an orange giant star, but it's known as the bullseye because it can be seen as a red as a red star in the sky in the constellation of Taurus. And this is where we get our corporate symbol of Target, which is the red bullseye symbol. Mm -hmm. And so, um, <clears throat> and also that star's name, the re the bullseye, the red bullseye of of the constellation Taurus, which is the bull constellation, is the that star's name is Aldebaran, also known as Alpha Tauri, and it's the brightest star in the constellation of Taurus, making it the Alpha or the Most High. As in El, the Most High Bull God of the Bible, who is the the God of the Bible is El, the Most High. So, the Alpha is the Most High, which is why it's Aldebaran is the Alpha Tauri or the Alpha Bull. And in the constellation of Taurus is um, <clears throat> so again. That's where we get these symbols from. And to be better acquainted with Aldebaran. We might know it from the film Star Wars as Alderaan. Just take out, you know, just take out the B and the A in there, and you have Alderaan from the film Star Wars, written by George Lucas. Not just coincidence. And not just coincidence. He was obviously very well versed in Hebrew occultism and um, probably Kabbalistic traditions as well, and all this symbolism and the language, especially the language and the words. And the symbolism, and so this is where we see key key words that you know that 
give uh, that give clues to this, such as Yoda, which the Yod is the Hebrew letter, which is the Most High. It's aloft in the air, which is why Yoda floats around in the air, and which is why uh, when you get into numerology, he is nine hundred years old, and he after nine hundred he is reborn again into the One, which in numerology there is only nine letters. Once because once it gets to ten, it's actually just revert that back to one. One plus zero equals one. Right. So there are only nine numbers, and this also goes back to vortex mathematics as well. There's only it's a base ten system, and there are only nine numbers in this system, because in numerology, base numerology, and um, as well as um, gematria, it, there are only nine letters. So, um, and also Alderaan, Yoda, you have Qi Gong and Qui Gon Jin, which is Qi Gong, which mm-hmm. is I noticed that one is a form of energy work, and Jin coming from the Sufi and the Islamic traditions and the Hindu traditions. The Jin are known as um, I, I'm not too well versed in the Jin, but when you, I mean, you can look these up. Um, it's a genie the, spirit, if I remember correctly. Exactly, it is a genie spirit. It can be perceived as uh, the demiurge in many of these esoteric teachings. The demiurge, which is not the one true creator, it's it's these false man-made gods that we attribute, such as the bull god, the bull god L, could be you know the it's the demiurge. It's not the true creator of everything. It's it's the man-made creation that it's these idol worships, you know, like like from the Bible, the the golden calf, which is you know the the idol worship of the of the bull god, El from the Bible, who is who is Saturn, who is Cronus, because Cronus was the god of of Cana Phoenicia, and which comes who was the who was in mythology he was deemed as the founder of the city of Byblos. Which was, which was Byblos was known as the city of the twin bulls, and so this is where we and and Byblos is where the etymological root from where we get our word Bible, and Bible by meaning two, bull meaning bull. So the so twin two bulls, the city of the two the city of twin bulls. Not really hard to put that one together, eh? And no, it's very simple. It's all in the sounds. It's all in the phonics, which comes from Phoenicia, which is the phonetics, which is the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, which gives us our modern English alphabet, which is the tool of all control and all commerce through language, through court systems, through legal systems. Mm-hmm. It's all Saturn worship. It is all comes from this ancient Cana Phoenician death cult. It's a sacrifice death cult who the Cana Phoenicians in the city of of the twin bulls of Byblos, which gives us our modern word of Bible, because Byblos was an ancient Greek word, which meant book or Biblios, which is, again, where we get our word Bible. So, um, <clears throat> so what they would do is they had a practice that they would sacrifice a bull to the bull god, El, in order to appease him for the harvest and they would offer burnt sacrifices of of two bulls and they would they would um <clears throat> as well as this goes to the temple of solomon in the bible uh they would have an altar to to the god, the most high bull god el and they would offer blood ritual sacrifices to el and they would had a ritual where they would drink the bull's blood out of a bowl which the etymol- etym- etymology of the word bull comes from the bull. Bull is linked to bull etymologically. If you study the roots of these words, they are all connected. So the bull comes from the bull. And this is why they would drink the bull's blood from the bull, which is where we get our modern traditions of – which is where we get our modern re- uh, red bull. Because you're drinking the red – symbolically, you're drinking the Red Bull's blood. Mm-hmm. And the logo for the Red Bull is the by bulls. It's the twin bulls. Which it's, gives you energy. It, it, which gives you energy. And 
which which the, their motto is it gives you wings like the ancient Babylonian and Mesopotamian bull god of the Shedu who was no, who was the winged bull who flew through the air which is why Michael Jordan is the red bull who flies through the air Michael Air Jordan who flies through the air he's the ancient Babylonian winged bull and of course his number is 23 and he flies through the air just like the Babylonian winged bull which is I mean the all these things are connected and so again this goes back to the letter A which is the truncated pyramid which is the air symbol so which is the symbol of the Illuminati the truncated pyramid with the capstone elevated in the air or aloft in the air um <laughs> so so yeah so, sorry i go off on tangents but oh, i want a side note actually before we go further than that um i don't know at what point yoda's name was changed to yoda but i recall reading a book on the original scripts for the first three movies years ago and yoda's name was midge m-i-d-g-e his description was the same little little green fellow but at some point, someone, I'm going to guess George Lucas, changed it from Midge to Yoda. <laughs> so that sounds so directly intentional to me, just based off of the little things we've been talking about here. It sounds like that absolutely the symbolism was you know, intentionally put in there. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, everything that we see on Holly, on, in Hollywood, on film screens on any sort of screen as far as TV or Hollywood movies go, everything, every single symbol, every frame, every, everything that every visual is carefully strategically placed there for a specific reason. Nothing happened. Nothing is placed there by chance or by accident. Hollywood because the magic wands were made from the wood of a holly tree. Exactly. Like Harry Potter's wand was made from Hollywood? His magic wand, yes. I always thought that was interesting. And, and what does J.K. Rowling know? She knows, um, I guess, esoteric occult knowledge, which um, I'm not sure about her. But, um, but yeah, this is all very – there's a lot of – there's so much symbolism in that as well. I mean, going back to – Oh, just so much. I haven't gone into the Harry Potter symbolism myself personally, but but yeah, it's all it's all Hollywood black magic, which is which is the black the dark priesthood, which is it's all Saturn worship. It is all programming. It's all mind control via our perceptions, via symbols, images. And it paints a picture in our subconscious mind, whether the conscious mind is aware of it or not. The subconscious mind knows all of these things, and it, and when it's ruled from, when we are ruled from the unconscious, our perceptions can be influenced, and our therefore, once our perceptions are influenced, our behaviors can be influenced. To what end? A lot of people have asked me. Ah. <sighs> Basically, to to make us easily manipulated. To well, Jordan Maxwell always puts this very very simply: it's to keep us satiated, to keep us entertained, to keep us to not know what is actually going on, to to be our own sovereign beings, our own our own rulers over our own sovereignty over our own lives. It's it's so that it it keeps us externalizing our own power into someone else into an external thor authority uh, such as government government meaning mind control govern the latin root to to steer or control and meant latin root meaning mind so that is what i i see the ultimate ends of all these the symbols the language um all of these occult esoteric teachings is it, it, there, it's all hidden in order to to maintain control over the population, in order to keep them subservient to the master, to keep to keep them entertained. They uh, get 
it's all ancient Roman. It well, it comes from Cana Phoenicia, but then it was which was passed on, and and you know the torch was sort of taken up by ancient Rome, who you know conquered. Their motto was to divide and conquer, and all their another one of their mottos was give them bread and games while we go out and conquer the world. Well, I use that term actually in a lot of conversations that the great big distractions we have between all the alcohol, pizza, beer, TV shows, <laughs> all that nonsense. I just call it a modern but day bread and circuses because that's exactly what it is. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's all it's all just. The pointless bullshit, the bullshit that doesn't – that's not important in our lives. I mean it's it's trivial. It's shallow. It's not helping us to relate to other cultures. It's, it's this American – it, it's it's America. It's – you know, it's this West, Western philosophy of, you know, that – that somehow America is number one, and that, and most Americans never ever actually get outside the country. Well, because that's uh, obviously because it's a form of control. The government does not want us, you know, to go outside the country to see the world. They don't want us to experience other cultures, to you know, to see how how similar we all are as as a human species, how related, how we all want the same things out of life we want a good a good home we want good food we want clean air we want you know clean water and we are how we're all we're all the same essentially at the base core level so yeah we all we are all connected at at a universal conscious level because consciousness cannot be separated it cannot be divided but the perception of of who we are of what we are which is our perception and what Hollywood and government and this cult of Saturn, which worships the material, physical, tangible realm, it wants to keep us trapped in this realm of infinite incarnation. And I use the term infinite, not a, not meaning limitless, because if you break down the word itself, you are in finite. You are in finite existence meaning you are limited as long as you are in finite which is again back to the lemniscate the infinity symbol the hourglass the eight the the number eight which is which is the eight spoked wheel of saturn so they want us to be limited in this realm of phys- to think that this realm of physical tangible reality is all that there is as opposed to that there is <clears throat> there we are infinite spiritual beings that exist on a on a on a quantum level that when you break down is not solid at all it is we we are we are energy we are life pure life force that everything is pure life force even solid even solid matter when broken down at a quantum level is not solid at all no not at all everything is uh, energy vibrating at different wavelengths Exactly, especially links of light and sound, and and that is what we are. We are pure light. We are not these physical, tangible, material goods that we buy, and we are not these. We are not the car that we drive. We are not the house that we acquire. All of these things are tools to help us achieve what we came here to achieve in life, which is to learn to love each other, to learn to to transcend this physical realm and to have our feet on the ground with our head in the stars at the same time not to float away in the clouds looking for some some external god outside of us as as the you know as the religions would have us believe that god is something outside of us that we need to appeal to or else you know or else we will suffer horrendous consequences which is all programming of these of these ancient dark priesthoods, which is the the reason that all of the all of this religious programming is like that is because they wanted to gain con- they wanted to gain control by selling basically selling spirituality by the the ancient Egyptian scribes would sell a, a book of the dead in order to to transfer the souls into the afterlife. By purchasing one of these scrolls, 
from the scribbling scribes who who wrote down these books of the dead and charged immense you had to be incredibly wealthy to purchase one of these one of these books of the dead to transfer your to guide your soul into the afterlife into the fields of elysium as they saw it mm-hmm. into it's been a scam since way back when exactly and so this is this dark priesthood of saturn goes way back and this is what they this is how they deceived everyone was just i mean not really anything it's it's nothing personal it's just business i mean yeah I, I, this is what i can't personally comprehend myself how anyone could really think business is you know think of business so highly you know like like i guess like like the, these Wall Street bankers or whatever. I mean, I just don't see how it can be so worth it, you know, to to basically to worship money, to worship commerce, to you know, to, because I guess the reason why is because you know it's like it's like playing a game of Monopoly. You know, if you control the board, you get this feeling of ooh, I I I control everything. I control the chessboard. I control the game. I control the entire board. So, so yay! That makes me feel you know powerful. That that gives me a sense of power. When it's really just a game, and as long as as long as they're playing that game, they are trapped inside the game as well. So they are trapped in this cycle of perpetual reincarnation. And they feel that they aren't able to progress to transcend this realm of physical incarnation. So therefore, they feel the need to to hold everyone else back as well, to keep everyone else in this game of endless commerce and reincarnation cycles of infinite time. And 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 when I say infinite, I don't mean well. Yeah, it's lim- It's endless time. It's the the realm of time, which is the bounded infinity. You are bounded in finite time. The realm of Saturn, uh, of you know the hourglass. So, so you know if they can control the game, then they can keep you know reincarnating into this reality, and they can keep controlling it through their genetic bloodlines, which. If when we study genetics and um, and genealogy, and when we study um, epigenetics as well, we we learn that information and memory is stored in DNA. So when they when they pass down this information through their through their royal bloodlines and their elite elite bloodlines, then they pass down this with this knowledge, this ancient. This ancient tradition, they pass it down in their bloodlines, in the DNA itself, and so therefore they they can continually control this reality by passing that along. And so, so they want to keep all of us trapped in this game as well. When we're literally just here to learn, we are here for a limited amount of time to to evolve our souls, to expand our our spiritual growth to to learn to to learn to connect with each other to relate to each other in in more expansive ways beyond the material goods beyond the commerce you know beyond all of these forms of of control of and when i say control i don't mean it like i don't mean it like necessarily it doesn't even have to be a direct a direct intentional force. It could just be, you know, something that just kind of, you know, so, something in the collective unconscious, you know, that that sort of evolved over time, you know, or it could be intentional. Honestly, I'm not too sure about that myself. It, it, or it could be both. It could be intentional and it could also be just, but it's what one thing that it's not is it's not human nature. You know, we are not these animalistic beings that, that mo- ma- mainstream science would have us believe evolution darwinian institutions would have us we are not these we are not these that's not human nature is is to you know is to fight and and conflict with each other it's it's not to you know to divide e- each other and to separate and to you want want to put each other into slavery that is not human nature 
that is that is this dark priesthood, which is basically could be it, it is an external. They're they're a manifestation of the collective unconscious, which is the R complex of the brain, which is the most primitive evolution of the human anatomy, which is the the reptilian portion of the brain. It's the most primitive form of the brain, which is associated to survival, to fight or flight mechanisms. It's so it wants to perpetuate its own existence. It can't conceive of itself as being a spirit as being a spiritual being outside of this, you know, outside of this physical reality. It can't conceive of that. It's only concerned with with collecting as much material wealth as it can in this moment to to perpetuate its own existence. It's 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 a it's a virus of the mind. It's it's a parasitic way of it's a parasitic way of thinking. It's it's a cancer of the mind. It wants to spread as 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 it wants to spread as much as it can without you know without being checked, you know, without being balanced. It wants to just perpetuate its own existence and and just reproduce virally as much as it can. And the way it does that is through viral media, through mainstream media, through Hollywood television, tell of visions, television programming. Programming, because they're programming you. Exactly. It's, it's, and it, we don't see how it's it's done until we start to see the symbols and the language and how it's all in the words and you know i don't necess- i don't meet mind control as as in you know like strap you down to a chair and you know probe you with electrodes although that is a form of mind control and that is also used in these dark saturnian underground masonic cults yeah. sat- satanic cults all they do use that type of mind control Although that's not the type of mind control that they use for the masses, for for the mass amount, the mass in order to control it, an entire population, you have to do it subtly. You have to do it from the unconscious. You know, you, they can't come out and do it by force because we would catch on to them and we would be like, "Hey, um, we're gonna kick your ass. We're gonna team up and you know kick your ass if you try and you know impose your will on the entire population. It's not gonna happen." which is what most people are waking up to now. But most people still aren't awake to the fact that that how it's being used on a frequency level, on a on a on a subconscious level in in the sounds, in the pop culture, in the music. No, I would say overall they're doing they're actually pretty successful because look how many jellyfish are out there just they like to call us useless eaters and in fact they've kind of constructed that to a, <laughs> with a lot of people, that's their term. Uh, that, that's funny because uh, that's funny that you say that because I haven't actually heard that term until just recently. Um, I saw that um, I saw someone exposing this video of Mark Dice, um, who was who was talking, who was you know, who was talking about the the recent um, Robin Williams Family Guy um, sacrifice connection. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah. And and Mark Dice specifically mentioned all the useless eaters, quote unquote. So yeah, (laughs) it's funny that he said that exact same thing. And that that's funny that you say that that's how they refer to us. And well, so that, what does that obviously make Mark Dice? Well, he's obviously a paid COINTELPRO fucking shill. So I don't know. I hear that said a lot about people like Mark Dyson, Alex Jones. Uh, Mark, I, I know, studies a lot of this Illuminati symbolism. That's why I think he would have used that term. Ah, uh, now I, when, I if they're paid, I, I, I haven't. I don't know a damn thing about the guy, but so I don't know him personally. Um, I don't know. I don't buy into the whole Alex Jones is evil and Mark Dice is evil. And the only thing I question about both of them, to be perfectly honest with you, is how they can study this information and still think that Christianity is real. Exactly. That's my big, like, really? Yeah. How do you interview someone like Jordan Maxwell, who will go on and on and on about astrotheology and where all that symbolism comes from, 
but they're diehard Christians. They think that that really happened, and it's just like I don't understand. I'm not going to bash anyone's religions. If, yeah. if if that's what you need, that's fine. Yeah. I just don't understand how you understand so much yet fail in that one one aspect. Epic fail, man. Well, that's the way I see it, but that's yeah. not the way they see that's, it. And who am I to judge? That's a that's a perfect point that you bring up, right? So that is a huge red flag. That is a major red flag. So I'm I have nothing against the 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 person themselves. I have nothing against Alex Jones as a person because honestly, he he like he is he obviously interviewed Jordan Maxwell, so he does have bits of truth and he does put out bits of truth. However, there are those red flags like you just pointed out that how can you get this deep into this information and still have those programs? Because they – I mean like a lot of people claim to have religious experiences and I think I think pe- certain people – I think a lot of people to be honest with you need to put a label on something. Like they need to say, well, this is what it is. I've had spiritual experiences but – I've never seen or experienced anything. I've seen a lot of things, to be honest with you, but I've never seen or experienced anything that makes me think any religion has got it right. Not not like organized, out of a book. I know that spirituality is real. I know that I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, but nothing has convinced me, not even a little bit, that any religion on planet Earth has got it right. Yeah. Exactly. But however, there are bits in, in Pete. There is a universal truth underlying all of these teachings and these religions, but it's wrapped up in allegory and it's wrapped up in symbolism and it's wrapped up in and they're taught in parables and and a paradox and a, and and is and which is a paradox and a par a parable. Literally, at its root meaning, it means bullshit. It's, it's it's it is there are universal truths underlying all of these things, but they are wrapped up in exoteric bullshit to keep the masses beating around the bush from getting to that universal truth at the core, which is wrapped up in allegory and symbolism. And when you view it from the anagogic, which is meaning to see through the literal is to see through it as a literal history and to see it as as a as a symbolic m- metaphorical meaning that that gives you a sense of of how to live of of how to tr- to you know a, of a universal truth a common bond between all of us that's hidden underneath there so so again that goes back to the esoteric and the exoteric and you know the parable comes from par, uh, Greek par, para bole, and and bole itself is the root word for bull uh, in 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 etymology. So there we have the bull again. Exactly, and para means beside, which means if you ha- if to be beside something, there has to be a side a, and there and look uh, when you break down the phonics of the very word beside b side. There's it's B side because there has to be an A side. There's side A and then there's side B. So there's twin aspects there. There's two aspects. There's twin pillars. There's Masonic twin pillars there, which anyone that studies Freemasonry and esoteric teachings knows that especially Jordan Maxwell will talk about this mm-hmm. as well. Moab and Boaz. Wa- yeah, Joachim and Boaz. And the twin towers and the twin pillars of the sun and the moon. So, so the para means the two. It means the beside of. So, and bole meaning the bull. So again, it's the twin bulls. It's the bi bulls. It's it's the Bible and and the bi bulls. Me, there is there is the old more. There is the the alpha bull and then there is the beta bull. There is the older, wiser, more experienced bull, and then there is the younger bull who learns from him. And this goes to the um, to the Old Testament, where you know the Hebrews say that they view El as God, who is the they view El as God, who is the more experienced, wiser bull, 
and they as the younger bull who learns from him. So, and I have to give my credit for every all of this stuff that I'm talking about to True Theorist, House of Wisdom, Christopher Lord on YouTube, um, as well as uh, he's got a uh, his own blog, which is truetheorist.blogspot.com. He's the the original, um, and he he basically got on this uh, on this symbolism, language etymology, and all of this stuff. Also. Um, from learning about some of this research from Jordan Maxwell, only he also expanded on it and came up and just discovered so much original, original stuff that, I mean, he's gone into such depth that he's the only person that I've ever come across that whose level of research and and in-depth research has, you know, I mean, is on the same level if not even deeper than than Jordan Maxwell's research. I mean, although Jordan's been doing it for over, you know, 40 years now or how or long 50, I think. 50 years, damn. So yeah. <laughs> but uh but Christopher Lord has been doing it for about 10 years, but he is gone I mean, as we know, it, today in today's age we can you know find so much more information than we ever could back in the day so this makes it allows us to have access to so much more information than we ever could before so, well all the, all of us we have the benefit of people like jordan who i believe was the first at least the first very public person to put this kind of knowledge out there now we have the internet and it's we can all exchange information but he didn't have that advantage yeah i can I can't even imagine having to go – I mean I can't even imagine the, the the amount of time. How he talks about it, how he would just go into libraries for hours and hours and hours photocopying things, how, how he just have giant boxes full of things he, he photocopied. <laughs> and, you know, Can you imagine? I mean up until the 90s, that is how it would have had to have been done. I know. I, I really I, – I really can't imagine. I can't imagine it like – it, all, although you know it, it, that makes it kind of fun in itself, because you know it's like a whole adventure in itself, you know, because it takes a lot more effort. So you really got to be dedicated. Yeah, I would say he definitely was dedicated. Plus, the good thing about that is you didn't have all these fucking disinfo, you know, sites and trolls everywhere, you know, out there literally just putting out a bunch of bullshit, so that when you go looking something up. Your first thing you're confronted with is a bunch of misinformation and disinformation. So, I mean, that's the good part about, you know, not having all of this access was, you know, he basically had direct access to original, you know, original documents and original research. But, um, well, from what I understand, he, I've cross checked a lot of his information, especially in my earlier uh, days of researching this sort of thing. And, he seems pretty spot on as far as I could tell. Didn't seem like he was putting out anything that uh, would be conce- could be misconstrued as disinformation or incorrect. No, definitely not. That's the thing is that uh, that's the thing about truth is you can anyone can go and corroborate this information from from multiple different sources. Like, like yeah, it's one thing if you get your information from one source. Then you don't necessarily, you know, it it doesn't have that same credibility. Well, then of, you're relying on that person's strengths and flaws, and no one else's. Exactly, and and therefore, you know, you sort of relinquish your own your own sovereignty. You relinquish your own power, and you give it over to someone else because you know you're you're trusting their opinion or or you're trusting their perspective rather than necessarily your own but but when i i see things as again a, a trinity as it's like it's like a gps your your own gps map and in order for a gps to accurately depict your location in space and time you need three points of reference so and and this is what i see as far as like consciousness awakening goes like when someone Here's this type of information for the first time. They're you know they're usually too programmed. They're like that's fucking ridiculous. You sound like yeah, this is tinfoil hat. Tinfoil hat. Yep, I love that. 
But when it comes from a second source, a second totally separate unrelated source, then they're like, okay, um, well, there might be something to this since – well, the the all these people must be mind controlled. Then they're all spouting a bunch of bullshit. But then, when they see it from a third un- unrelated source, then it, the picture clicks because then you have the triangulation, you have the trinity, and it, uh, you have the GPS l- l- triangulates the, your location in space and time. And all of a sudden, you have this. You go, holy shit! Okay, now I better start paying attention because now. There might be something to this, and then hopefully, if you know, if all conditions are right, then they'll go start looking something up for themselves and actually, you know, getting to the bottom of things on their own, as opposed to just you know passing it, it being ignorant of it and ignoring it, or you know, just passing it off as bullshit. Um, but yeah, so also, you know, that goes to the third eye symbolism. I mean, we've got two physical eyes. I mean. But just seeing the world through those two eyes, we can easily be – we can still be controlled. We can still be deceived. We can still be illusion. We can still be caught in illusions with seeing things through just these two physical eyes. But when we triangulate our vision with – by triangulate it with the third eye, the inner eye that sees within, that sees the intangible realms – that creates the the tri the triangle the triangle of L that in well like I was saying the vortex based mathematics that creates that that intangible axis it's the three six nine axis that Nikola Tesla spoke about the three the six and the nine and again the number nine the number nine number nine when you <laughs> when you start to look into the significance of the number nine. As it, well, actually, all of these numbers, the three, the six, and the nine, I mean, you will start to literally see the symbolism, the, the, the stories, the songs, the lyrics, all of, all of these dots start to connect once you – I mean once we see these things. And like Nikola Tesla said, you, you do have a key to the universe when, by knowing the secrets of the three, the six, and the nine because that is the intangible realm. That's the realm outside of time, outside of the control of the physical realm of Saturn, of the the physical reality, the the Lord of time, the infinite existence. I mean, so it it takes that triangulation, it takes that third eye, it takes that that three sources of cross referencing to you know to get to get your own our, our own truth. To be able to become relevant, to become clear. Well, to tie it all together, because um, we are going over an hour here, and we'll see if we can uh, kind of put a capstone on this. Um, <laughs> where do you feel uh, all this leads us to to today? What what is Saturn's role in modern Western culture? Hmm. Well, there is the perceived role of it. As far as the Elites are concerned, which is which is to you know continue ruling each other and to continue dividing each other by deceiving each other and trapping each other in this realm of infinite incarnation, reincarnation cycles into this physical reality where they have control of the game, or we take control of our own sovereignty. By learning these secrets and no longer ignoring it, no longer passing it off as, oh, well, this is dark and scary, so I'm you know, just going to tuck my head in the sand and go back to sleep. Or, oh, this isn't love and light, so I'm not going to pay attention to it. Or, Because honestly, I, I don't see how people can think that way because for me, this stuff is – it's it's not it's, – I, I mean, yeah, there is dark stuff that – there is dark stuff that people do with this information, but it's just information. It's only how people use it that – I mean these are symbols. It's language. I don't see how it can be used for, for, for ill purposes when it's brought to light, when it's brought to the conscious awareness. So that is the key for us in this day and age is in this age of awakening, in this age of information. 
is the only crime in the uh, the only the only crime in the age of information is to remain ignorant is, is to ignore things and that doesn't mean that we have to necessarily you know ob- obsess over it or get compulsive over it and every again everything is about balance it's about looking at it but not dwelling on it you know observing it but not getting sucked into it not getting caught in the vortex of it and it's being aware of it but not worshiping it like these like the fucking elite cult of saturn like they're oh we worship we they like fucking worship this shit like like in in astrology none of these things are in in astro theology and astrology all none of these things are inherently negative everything is is neutral and it's only when we get polarized into either a good or a bad a positive a negative a light or a dark that we get that we get caught up in 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 all of these forms of control be it light or dark even the light is is susceptible to being controlled hence this new the new age which is a satanic it's a saturnian cult the new age is movement although based there is truth based in it for the most part there are it's it's designed it's a designed another control mechanism to keep people from looking at the truth of of the shadow aspect it's it's to keep them you know looking the other way while they do and go and do all this shit in the shadows it's, it's only one facet of a much greater thing yeah exactly so i mean it's it, it, basically uh, my recommendation to everyone is to s- study etymology which is the root meanings it's etymology comes means the study of the true sense it means to get to the true sense of things not just language not just words but the the true sense of everything study the etymology of everything of cultures of histories of of mythologies of symbols of languages of words of of everything study etymology there are great resources there are online etymology dictionaries that i highly recommend going to one of the best is uh, etymonline.com e t y m online.com um there's i mean get yourself some some physical etymology books dictionaries if you want to and don't limit yourself to scholarly authorized versions of history and authorized version authorized dictionaries because if you're looking in the authorized version that means it was authorized by someone who author mm-hmm. who is who authorized these versions the authorized king james version of the bible who authorized it well there was a a form of there was it it had to be filtered out it had to be filtered through it had to be authorized or in other words it's not the true version of it it's the authorized version it's what one person or group of people wanted you to see and nothing more exactly so so uh, although that helps, but it's again, it's only one aspect. We we want to look at all aspects and put the whole, pe- the, all the all the pieces of the puzzle together to get the whole picture. We don't want to look at just one source, you know, just trusting our you know, our our education, just trusting you know our our degree, which of course we we get a degree because it's Masonic because mm-hmm. it's it's Illuminati. We get degrees. Um, so, so I mean, we don't need degrees. Uh, we don't need degrees to become enlightened. Um, we don't need masonry to become enlightened, or we don't need universities to become enlightened, or, or be, become an alumni, which is to become an Illuminati, mm-hmm. just become illumed or alumned. Um, so we don't need any of these things. We just need to have the the curiosity to to look to study. To look beyond the veil, to lift the veils of illusion, to look beyond the curtain, to lift that curtain, see the man behind it, and uh, and he's naked behind it, by the way, and he's <laughs> and it's not very impressive. Um, 
Uh, the emperor has no clothes, and uh, he, he's nothing to be impressed about. He, he <laughs> he's not working with a whole lot, so he should be very embarrassed. Um, but yeah, so study everything, question everything, even even your own uh, one's own belief systems, especially one's own belief systems. And of course, this can lead us into you know, states of neural plasticity, which at a time, it can be very confusing. And that's when the when the disinformation and the trolls like to swoop in and uh, steer us in a, in a direction when we become vulnerable in that state of neural plasticity, which is, you know, we know we start to realize that all the religions that we are taught our whole life is bullshit. But we start to see everything else. And we're like, Oh, well, well, I, I don't know what to believe anymore because uh, I, everything I knew is now proven to be a lie. So now I don't know what to believe in. Well, that's a brief state of – of it's a state of vulnerability in between states of order. It's, it's a st- that's a state of chaos in between higher levels of order. Well, you we can put the beliefs off to the side and start learning some facts. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. It's to – it's to and also just to to use discernment to to not lose your rationality not lose your credibility stay credible stay rational but don't you know don't again don't polarize yourself into that but you need that aspect you know don't get caught you know floating away in the clouds or you know thinking that you know we're gonna be raptured off into whatever you know ascend into some other realm or you know those are all forms of control stay rational stay rooted in reality but be open to expand to accept new information to but but that to observe new information not necessarily to accept it we want to be able to observe all things without necessarily having to accept it as our own you know as our as our own it's again being able to entertain a thought without ha- without having to accept it as our own and it's, it's, it's so therefore it's not being afraid to learn new things not being afraid to study what we fear because fear i i always say this one of my favorite sayings that I, that um i say quite often is if you fear something study it the the fear only comes from that which is unknown when it, it's is things only seem ominous because because we don't know about it once we study it then we there then we know about it and once we know about it therefore we no longer fear it because we now have the knowledge we now have the power we now have the wisdom well, we have the knowledge to know how to act upon that knowledge, which then gives us wisdom. And once we have the wisdom, then we can no longer be controlled. We can no longer be manipulated. We can no longer be enslaved. We can't, as as the Rolling Stone said, we can't, we won't be fooled again. And so there is truth hidden everywhere. It's, it's we got to have eyes to see it. We got to have ears to be open to observe and and to witness what others have to say and and um yeah so basically just you know that would be the who but you're correct oh my bad (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah there you go (laughs) it's all good so yeah that's basically my summary um well that was very well said and absolutely you are spot on is there uh any websites anything you want to get out for yourself um, my personal websites, um, I do most of all of my research from, from Facebook. It's, it's my, basically my most effective platform and tool to get information out. And it'd be it, because it's so easy to share information on, on Facebook. Like I can put out, I can write very elaborate notes, multimedia present. I can include YouTube links, uh, high resolution photos, Pack it with a lot of information, a lot of links, and all of that stuff. And for me, I, it's a lot easier to do than than putting out blog posts for me. So I like to use Facebook. Um, go to my Facebook page. Uh, my my community public page is called Lifting the Veil, and um, the actual URL address is facebook.com 
slash taking humanity back. And, uh, that's, that's my, that's my main page where I do most of my research. I put out all kinds of infographics, mostly focusing on language etymology, um, a little bit of mythology, a lot of symbolism, as well as I, I cover vortex-based mathematics, zero-point energy, free tech, free energy technologies, um, off-grid living, um, exposing exposing corruption, fraud, exposing the birth certificate um, fraud, exposing the the legal systems, exposing the court systems. Everything that is truth, I'm doing it on that page. So go there. That's my main resource. I also have a, a personal page called Made Manifest. Um, you can look me up there as well um, if you want to con- connect with me personally. Um, I'm, I always like to be personable. I always like to respond to people to um, you know share my stuff on a, on a ground grassroots level. You know, because that's how this is done. We do this together. We do it uh, from a grassroots level. We all connect and share our information personally, and um, that is how we get this done. That is how we get this information out. That is how we flip this pyramid upside down, and um, <clears throat> and you know, topple topple the house of cards. So um, those are basically my websites. That's where I do all my stuff. Um, that's where you can find me at contact me so yeah (laughs) fantastic well i'd say we covered a lot of ground here tonight and uh, we should do this again sometime yeah definitely man for sure i'm always open um i'm pretty much always available um still getting used to the whole internet um interviews and radio things but i'll gradually get more and more um poignant more and more fluent as i go along i'm I'm more of a writer myself. Uh, my my thoughts come out much more coherently as a writer. So that's what I prefer to do is basically just write it because I have time to, you know, because like I said, my thoughts are all over the place. So I go back and edit and rearrange things so that it flows in a perfectly synchronous, fluent presentation. But I'm working on getting, you know, my verbal aspect there as well. So um, I hope so I did just fine. <laughs> Right, I, I hope I've done some, some pretty good justice there. You have. All right, folks, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Secrets of Saturn. We'll see you again. <laughs>